Hello everyone, this is Lisa from Lisa Haas Custom Sewing here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I apologize for taking so long to upload another video. I had a bunch of personal th issues uh, going on <coughs> here at the home front that distracted me for a number of months. But <coughs> those are over and I'm back to sewing and uploading videos. So let's see what we have here. This is a coat that I ordered, actually, from a company called Rose We out of China. Now, the sleeve length did not fit. It was way too short, so I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate coat out of this. I'm going to make a winter coat, which means I've got to get some uh, flannel back satin still for the lining in order to sorry I'm messing with something here in order to uh, <coughs> make it warm but it is other than that it fit real well and the only issue was it was a thin fabric and it was only suitable for a light coat in the springtime so I'm gonna make it into a heavy coat let's see what our notations say first of all we know that it's a set-in sleeve and it's a long one. Now as far as the darts are concerned, this is a shoulder seam princess that goes all the way up from the shoulder and down. Now this we are going to work in the sheaths area on Pattern Master Boutique. The lapel and collar is very wide so you could go, I'm going to go a 3 inch, but you could go even all the way up to a 5 inch if you wanted to. It is double breasted and it looks like it has, let's see, where's my buttons? One and a half inch buttons. Probably going to do the same right in through here on the mock belt. I can't see today. There, we have a mock belt with buttons. Now, as far as the pockets are concerned, this is a welt pocket, and it slants from high hip down to hip. The fabric that I'm going to use, I believe, although I've cut my welts out and I'm going to practice on a scrap, but I believe the fabric that I'm going to use is going to be too thick for this kind of application. So what I think I'm going to do instead is make a bag pocket in the se in the seam between the front and the in the side seam between the front and the back. I'm not quite sure yet. I've cut it out the pattern at least, but I'm not quite sure yet if I'm going to do that. Now the back does have a center back seam and I've eliminated that. The length is a knee length, but I'm making mine a midi and it does have full flare maybe five, maybe seven inches on the flare. I'm going to set mine at five. So those are our notations, and of course I made a major notation here. And we will go ahead and save this as a PNG or a JPEG or whatever you want to save it as in whichever graphic manipulation program that you're using to make your notations. If you're making your notations on, by hand, on a printout of the garment, then you can just scan it in as a JPEG and bring it into your editor. So now that we've got that notated, I'm not going to save it because it was already saved, we're going to go into Pattern Master Boutique and pull our major pattern pieces that we need to manipulate. See you in a minute. Okay, here we are in Pattern Master Boutique. I have version 6. We are going to go, and I've got my chart up right here. We're going to go into the sheaths, if I can get my mouse going. Now this is a very simple, fairly simple design. And the only thing that we're going to modify in editor is going to be the back pieces. So the front go ahead and get everything the way you want it. Here's what I did. First I did a classic. I went to the midi, double breasted. Come on. 
come on, double breast me. And then we're doing a lapel. Darts in the front is a shoulder princess. In the back is no darts and no torso darts. Sleeve set in. Now here's what I generally do. I generally do a tapered sleeve for my dresses or my blouses because I like the fit. However, with a coat, you are going to want more room. So I took mine, you can go, I took mine to an 11 on the hem circumference. This is around the wrist opening. It's still a little tapered. Watch what happens when I do straight. See, it opens up even more. So we could go tapered on that and just open the wrist opening. I'm going to take mine down to about a 10, I think. 9, 10. That still gives us some taper, but not as much as a full tapered sleeve. Collar. We set a 3-inch collar. You can set this at a 4 if you want. Go down to your lapel width, too and set it at the same. Or you could even do it more and have a narrower collar than the lapel. But I set mine at the same. Pocket, you can do your welt. or you can, And I'll show you how to uh, set the angle on that. I'm going to do an inseam. Details, nothing on details. And then, of course, settings we've got to get rid of the seam allowance because we're going to be doing some manipulation. Front neck depth is okay. I'm going to put one and a half inch buttons in, which extends the front out a little bit. And then you can adjust your length if you want. I'm taking mine down to a 48. Okay. So then we're going to save it. And I've already got mine saved, so let me go into Pattern Master Editor, and we'll start doing our manipulations. See you in a moment. Okay, here we are in Pattern Master Editor. This is where we're going to manipulate this back pattern right here. I want to go ahead, and I've already done FM for File Merge to bring in my notation uh, PNG, which is right here. <coughs> we want, let's move this guy, we're going to make a copy, and we're going to bring it over here. I'm going to zoom out and get all this out of my way, and put it up here. Zoom back in. Okay, always make copies, don't work with your original raw piece. Right here, what we're going to do is ungroup it, which is Control U. I'm going to LI for a line, and I'm going to right click on this waistline point, hold my Control key, go straight across to the center back, and join them. Then I'm going to do an intersection of that line to the center back fold line. And then we're going to do a break, which is BR, like boy, like break, BR. And we're going to break this line. You have to click on the line first. And then we're going to right click right here at this point. All right. I want this out of my way. Let's pull it down here. And we actually need to copy that and make, put it down here for the skirt as well. Okay. Let's look at this. This has, even though it's pleated in the back, it has been drawn together further by this mock belt. So this pleating right here looks like it goes up to about the, sin, uh, the shoulder point right here. So what we're going to do right in through here is do an LI, right click at this point, Hold your control key, go all the way down. Actually, 
Let's do another line right here. No, right here. Go straight up. Yeah, that's right at the shoulder point. <clears throat> now these are box pleats. Okay, how are we going to do this? If that goes all the way up to the point. I think this box plate actually goes a little bit further into... try midpoint. Let's work with that and see what we can do. So let's go back in here. Excuse me just a moment. <coughs> mm. This line here, we want to break right at this line here. That'll give us two lines. Now I want to do locate point, which is LP. Right click from here. And I want to locate two points. And then we're going to do the same thing. Line from here to here. Don't forget to hold your control key to make a straight line. Hit your space bar to repeat. Right click. Control key is held. Up to the neckline. Let's zoom into the neckline and do some intersection. of my computer. I need new memory. Alright, let's go in here and break this. Right click to break it right at that point. Space bar. Break. That's done. Okay, here's what we want to do here. We want to copy all of that. Let's group it. Control G. Grab it. Copy it. Lay it right down where it was. Now, we're going to take that and the rest of the skirting and just draw it down. And get the wording there too. Draw it down. I want to look at this right quick. Okay, we got all of our points right here. You know what? I messed up. And we're going to ungroup that and go back in here. I want to break this. What do you know it was broken? Okay. Let's go back into here. Copy. And then we're going to grab... No, we're going to do that differently because I want to group it. Copy. Lay it down where it was. Grab it. Grab this. Grab this. Grab this, and grab that, and we're going to ungroup that, make sure I've got everything, yeah, okay, that shows us where all our points are, that's the reason we did that, I'm sorry I had to go a little bit slow <coughs> in order to get it the way I wanted it. Sorry, coffee. <coughs> Still early in the morning for me. <coughs> Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make pleats. So we're going to copy this object, lay it right down on top of itself. I want to grab all of this and one of these. Make sure I have all my angles up here at the neckline, and I do. 
I do not want this. Now we're going to rotate this. It's going to look like a dart, but we're going to make it into a pleat. So we're going to rotate unit, R-U. Up here is the pivot point. Here is the other side of the pivot point. And we're going to rotate the center back one inch out because that'll double it, makes a two inch pleat. And we're going to rotate this way, this way, counterclockwise. Okay, so this I want to change the styling into a dashed line. Exit to get out of there. We're going to copy this object. Lay it down on top of itself. Grab it and the rest of all of this. I do need to break this line right here. We don't want that one. We do want this. Oh, that's it needs to be ungrouped. Okay, let's ungroup this. There we go. Now we need to grab this one, this, this. I'm holding my shift key down to select multiple items. And we need to break here and here. Hold shift key down and grab that. There we go. Now this one we're going to rotate two inches. Pivot point. I hit RO instead of R to <coughs> rotate unit. My bad. I was on Facebook the other day and I subscribe to tiny uh, luxury homes just so I can see the houses I'll never be able to live in. And they had brain teasers, you know, three soccer balls with six spots each equals nine. So you got to figure out what each of those soccer balls. Anyway, I went and posted something wrong. It, my, my calculations were wrong. And somebody replied that, well, <coughs> I, your calculations are wrong. And I said, oh, my bad. And he started crowing about how sure I was about my calculations. And they turned, it out, turned out wrong. So I just said, look, maturity means admitting that you're wrong. Taking responsibility for what you said or did that was wrong. Immaturity means you keep nagging people about how wrong they were. Of course, he didn't like that. I don't really care. Now we're going to rotate unit, R-U, from this point to this point, two inches counterclockwise. This one <coughs> and this one are changed. Apply. Let's get this up here where it's out of my way. So here's what I'm going to do here just to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Two-way grain length. I'm going to do a one inch and it's going to be placed horizontal. That's not right. I'll get that in a minute. This folds into this. These two fold into the center. Let's do this one. We have three pleats, I think. You've got the center back, two, three pleats. There's one. We've done two. This is going to be our last pleat. I might go ahead and do four pleats depends on what I feel like. One, two, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, one, two, three. There should be three. This needs a copy laid on itself. We're going to select this one, this, and then all of this. Don't forget you're holding your shift key down to get all of these points. And we need to break this line here. I want this, but not this. Okay, R U, rotate unit, pivot point right here, end of the pivot point right here, two inches counterclockwise. Now, all this is going to be backwards on the skirt. These two need to change. Okay. Let's intersect this with this. Intersect this line with that line. And why is it not intersecting? Let's just do a break. Get rid of that. <coughs> Wrong. Zoom selected. Break. Ah, uh, it's grouped. Let's intersect this to this and intersect this to this. That got rid of it. Okay, so this, let's place our marks in here. One-way grain, inch, and we're placing it horizontal. And this is going to go that is being folded into the center back. Let's make a copy of that and move him over here and then we're going to rotate him here and just rotate him a little bit and then I need to make another op uh, copy of him let's bring him down here and then we're going to flip him this way let's rotate him again Okay, same thing right here. Let's get all this verbiage out of the way. So these two fold into the center. Now what we can do is to true this, these pleats if you want, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to do an arc from right at this point to this point bring it down, get rid of all of these, and then you can do a bunch of intersections from here to here. that guy and then we can get rid of all of these points if my computer would work for me okay now let's work on the skirt <coughs> because of the flare let me get down to my calculator we need to know how 
long this particular line is. It's 7.875, which is 7 and 7 eighths. This is 13 and almost 5 eighths. 13.612. So if we want to go 7.875 divided by 13.612, it's about half as much. It's all it's a little bit over half as much it looks like. What I'm trying to do is to figure out the angle of the line that I need to draw. Let's see, maybe I messed that up. Thirteen point six one two divided by seven point eight seven five. Okay, that's better. I just added it wrong. So there's 1.7285 of this more down here. So let's go back in here. I need to break here to here. 0.914. What was that measurement? 13.612 divided by 7.875. It's wrong. 1.728. Point 0.914 times, point, let's just go 0.78. So, <coughs> That's not right either, is it? 1.72, okay. One point seven two times point nine one four. One inch <coughs> one point five seven. So locate a point. at 1.57. LP, <coughs> locate point, 1.57. So then this first line is going to go from this point down to that point. Now you can see it's angled. Go back in here. That's 1.827. Oh dear, okay. Okay, it's at 1.72. Okay. Just remember that 1.72. Give me a pencil and paper. Okay, so we need to go, that's 182, 1.82, 1.827 1 times 1.72, 3.14. So we need to come over here, grab this, and locate point 3. Point, what was that? One four. Eight 
And then we're going to draw another line down here. And then the last one. Get all of these together and find the length of it. 2.74. Two point seven four times one point seven two. Next one is four point seven one. Locate point four point seven one. And then we're going to do a line, LI, comes up to here. Okay, we need to come down here and break this up. Zoom selected, break. Okay, one thing I didn't show you on the bodice, let's come back up here. I am going to locate a point at one inch above this. Let's do one and a half. And then just go around. Get your space bar to repeat. <coughs> And if you just hit your space bar first, it'll tell you to select an object, grab your object, right click at the bottom, and it'll bring it up and it'll have the same 1.5 point. Space bar, grab your object. Okay, locate point, it didn't do it. Haha, -ha, for me, 1.5. And then we're going to do it right here. 1.5. Now I'm going to do an arc from here to here, and right click on one of those to snap it in place, and then we're going to do a line from here to here. Okay, we don't need it, but I just wanted it as a reference point. Now we're going to do some intersecting here to here. Space bar here to here. And these are your pleat lines. Now, <coughs> this line and this line can actually go away. There's our pleats. There's three pleats right there. <coughs> Sorry, cigarettes have killed my voice. We can take this back up. Okay, so there are all of our pleats. This line here can be uh, can go away, intersect this line to this line, and actually, technically, it could go away too. Get rid of that point. So if you look, we've got our marks to show this goes into the middle and this goes into the middle. If you wanted to, Let's break this line here and here. This line we're going to break. Now I'm right clicking on these points to get it exact. Here, ah, budge. This line we're going to break here, spacebar tap your line here. So we only have these. So let's cut locate the middle here and let's locate the middle here. And then you can do a solid line from here to here. That indicates the middle. Okay, let's do that again over here. Locate 
Locate midpoint. Locate midpoint. Line. Locate midpoint. Here to here. Okay, so line. Line. No wonder it wasn't doing it. Here to here. So you know that this folds into this, this folds into that. And so you can do your markings. This will fold into this center back. And remember, I've eliminated that center back seam. So now let's work on the skirt. Let's go into here. This needs, that's broken, that's broken, and that's broken. Let's go down to the bottom. That's broken, that's broken, and that's broken. Now we can go ahead and locate midpoints on those if we want. Actually, we don't need to do that yet. On the skirt, we're doing it opposite. So we're going to grab this, copy it, set it right down on top of itself, and then we're going to grab one, and grab the rest of them, accept your words, and then we're going to rotate the unit, and down here is the next pivot point, because we want it expanded out in through here. So this is your pivot point, right click, right click, and remember we only do a one inch at the center back, and we're turning it all clockwise this time. Let's change that. Now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and grab these two here and change the style on those. Let's grab this one, make a copy, set it down on top of itself, grab this, And all that. Rotate unit. We're going to do two eight inches. Here's your pivot point down here at the hemline. Up here, we're doing two inches clockwise. Now remember, we need to do locate point at one and a half inches from here. Locate point from here, one and a half inches, here, locate point from here, and from here. This goes into this, that goes into that, and now we need to do this one. Let's grab the point. And rotate unit. Pivot point here. Pivot point here, two inches clockwise. Okay, so let's get rid of this and do an arc. No, we're going to do our arc from here to here. Okay, now if you wanted to, why does that look wrong? Because that's only one inch. I'm just control Z. There. That's one inch. Let's grab all these.
are you are you following along pivot point pivot point two inches clockwise apply there this guy goes away this guy gets copied laying down right where he was before grab him 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 that one that one rotate unit pivot points down at the skirt him two inches clockwise apply there we go now I'm gonna get rid of that guy I'm going to arc him right here to here. And here to here. And then we'll get rid of that guy. And we'll get rid of this little guy. And this little guy. Sometimes you don't know whether you're going to go up or down there this we're gonna break here and we're going to copy this and bring it down here we're gonna copy these two and bring them down here and we're probably gonna have to rotate this out RO in the center. Okay, let's break this guy here. Remember, I'm right clicking on these points. I'm going to break him here. This we're going to break here and here. Let's locate the midpoint. And we've already got our midpoint located there. Let's do locate point one and a half inches down. Space bar. Hit your next right click. Enter. Space bar. Right click. Selector line. Right click. Enter. Spacebar, select your line, right click at the top, it's already at one and a half, you enter. And you're just going to continue doing that till you have all of these lines. Okay, let's arc this. Now, you could have just done an offset, one and a half from this would have been perfectly fine. Let's get these two. Copy one. Bring them down here. Grab both of them. Rotate from the center until you get them lined up. Now these two we can move up. And we're going to zoom back in here and do our intersections. We don't want to do this because that's the center back uh, fold line. So we're going to intersect that to that, that to that, that to that, that to that, and that to that. So there's our pleats. If you want a little bit more fullness in through here, let's get down here and arc this. You could go ahead and rotate unit. Let's give it another five inches. There's the pivot point. There's the other side. We're going to do five inches. Counterclockwise. What happens? Okay. So you can go here, arc here to here. And then all of this can go away. Not that, and not that. All that can go away. So there's your skirt pattern. There's all your pleating right in this. 
on the and these will all match up. The reason that I did all the points on the waistline, grouped them, and then duplicated them down to the skirt which I drew down was to be able to match these pleats from the top and the bottom, the top, the bodice and the skirt pieces, so that they those pleats will match up perfectly together and you will have one continuous look right here. Now what we're going to do is hand lay this belting down. Let me show you right quick how to let, make the belt. So I'm just going to make, let's see, I'm going to zoom all right quick. I want to look at this. And let's see. Let's ungroup it and then do a line. Now what I want to know, this line was here to here. go in here, zoom selected, intersect, here to here, this to this, and this to this. I want to know how big that is. Two and three quarter inches roughly. So that's half of it. So I need to make basically two and three quarters. That's going to be four and a half five and a half, five and a half, so let's go line, click, hold your control key, drag to the right, let go of your control and do 5.5. .5. Let's offset that two inches, because I want a two inch wide belt. Now. Let's do a line from here. Again, and I'm right clicking. We're going to locate our midpoint, and we're going to locate our midpoint. Then we're going to do a circle, CI. From the center, right click at that midpoint, and right click down here. Do it again, right click at your midpoint. Draw it straight down and right click there. There is your belt. Now you can do an arc and match it up and then get rid of the circle. Arc, right click, right click, match it up and then get rid of the circle. Text. And there's your belt. Now what I did on the belt, I went ahead and located my midpoint here and here, drew a line down here, and then I did this on the fold. So that meant I intersected this to this, this to this, got rid of those, came in here, place on fold, and vertical, it was, let's go 1.5 since it was a 2 inch belt, and of course you got to flip in the other way, and then this way what you're going to do, once you get the rest of your garment put together, you can kind of figure out. You can place this on the fold. You can make it a, an inch bigger. Place this an inch away from the fold. Make this belt an inch longer. And then determine from that point how big you want your belt. Uh, you could place the pattern on the, fi uh, not necessarily the finished garment, but enough of the finished garment before lining. 
to figure out how long you want this belting. Okay, the next thing we need to do, we can get rid of this and this. Let's just go ahead and group him back and put him back up here. Come on, give me this pattern piece. Put him back up here. The next thing we want to do is make lining pieces. So this and this needs to go. Line them up. Zoom window into here. And line them up. There is all lined up perfectly. Now what we're going to do is to ungroup the front because we want this, that line, that mark, that mark, remember to hold down your shift key to get multiple items, this, that mark, and this, and that. We're going to copy one bring it all over here. Now what we need to do is to ungroup your front facing and where, what is this? I've done this a million times before. I'm going to get rid of all those. Get rid of this and this. And that. And we're going to intersect over here. And then we need to get in here. Drag your wording down. Now once you offset at 6.625 here, here. These are your seam allowances. And then we're going to, let's do an intersection from here to here. Or from here to here. And then I'm going to get in right here and draw a line straight across here at this point. and then intersect it over here and then I'm going to offset that 3 eighths of an inch 0.375 okay get rid of that intersect this to this spacebar this to this we can get rid of that intersection this to this. So there is our front lining piece. It's going to attach to this facing. Now we can get that facing out of the way. Group that back. There is our front. Here's our front facing. Here's our front lining. Group that back. Now you're going to cut what you're going to do on the lining for the back, you're going to take this guy, pull him over here, zoom selected, and I'm going to ungroup him. I'm going to make two pieces again. Right click over here, break this guy at that point, copy lay it down on itself, grab all these. Now remember we did a 5 inch rotate on this, so we need to do the same thing. Rotate unit from here to here, 5 inches, and we're doing it counterclockwise. Arc, AR from here to here. 
get that one out of the way. And then we're going to do a one and a half inch offset to give us a pleat in the back. And then you'll just do your seam allowances on that. Let's zoom all. So this is going to be grouped after you do your seam allowances. This will be grouped after you do your seam allowances. All this will be grouped after you do your seam allowances. This too. On the hems, I'm going to do a two and a half inch hem on the bodies and a one and a half inch hem on the lining because you want your lining about one inch above the bottom of your hem. Now you could do a half inch and just have it a half inch, uh, half inch shorter. It's however much you want your lining to rise above the hem of your garment is how much shorter you're going to do the lining. That way you don't have to cut it. So you've got your lining from your back front bo or your back bodice and your back skirt. You've got your front facing, you've got your front lining. So we got lining for that. You're going to make a lining piece for this sleeve. And basically that's it. That's all there is to this. I told you all we needed to do was to manipul manipulate the back in order to recreate that. So I hope you learned something. Stay tuned for more videos. I finally got my computer back in my office instead of in the living room where I was watching movies on the television. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to do some more videos, maybe get out of that, get some garments out of that depression era book, ebook that I have. Y'all stay tuned. I have cut this out and started constructing it. My camera is unavailable at this time, so I may have to work on it on my webcam if I don't get my camera back soon. And sorry, I'm drinking coffee. It's still morning here for me. What I have already done is to construct the front and the front side the center front and the front side. I've already got those, uh, everything's cut out and I've got those two constructed. I have the pleats made on the top and the skirt of the back. I've already made my belt. Oh, I know what I was going to show you to do. Let's see if I can do it. This guy needs to be Let's ungroup him. This is my hip line right here. Straight across. See how far down that is. That's about, that's not the hip line. I need to go down seven and a half inches, locate point. 7.5, that's my hip drop. Let's go ahead and put a, way, a line at the waist. Now I need to locate another point, 3.75, which is half of my hip drop. Now, we're going to draw some lines across from here. across from here I hit the wrong key do some intersections okay now what I want to do is draw a diagonal line if we look at the coat it goes from the back at the high hip to the front at the hip line. So I'm going to come in here at the back and we'll draw a line. Now we're going to come in we're going to locate the midpoint 
I want a 5 8 inch. Let's see how you want to do this about a quarter inch bigger than the opening for your welt. So my opening, let's make it a half an inch. So I want to offset this by a quarter this way and this way. Okay. And we're going to this needs to be a five a five inch. That's six point one one three. So that's going to be 1.113 1 over. Technically, you could just leave these lines and mark them. And then that would be your pocket placement, which is no big deal. And then you just do your welt pocket. You might have to raise this up a little bit. I d it does not at the waist. It might be a little bit higher than high hip. So you'll have to try this on after you've attached this to the center front and then make your adjustments on your pocket. But that's basically what I did. I just did it at an angle right here. High in the back, low in the front to allow dogs to allow for I guess my son's home for lunch to allow for whatever depth you need this. And that's basically all there is to reproducing this coat. I will show you the construction as much as I have gotten done and the rest of it as soon as I get my camera. Thanks for joining me. You all have a great day. Like, subscribe, comment. Great. Thanks for watching.